Hello everyone, my name is Tim Murray-Brown and I am currently the composer in residence with the Music Hackspace through the organisation Sound and Music. Um, I'm here to talk about the project I've been working on there. I've been there for about nine months now and we're coming to the conclusion and it's an interactive sound installation called The Cave of Sounds. So the Music Hackspace is something of a hub for people who are interested in making things that involve technology and music in different ways. It's an offshoot of the London hack space over in Hackney. And uh, it's a great place where people come and exchange and with like, some visualization. They're kind of, in a way, turning up with a composition which they're then going to perform to you. So what, uh, what we were really trying to do on this project is get a sense of what it means to do this together. Because we often create interfaces or instruments or little bits of software and then come together and then perform together. But if you think about creating this interface as a musical act, then we want to sort of bring back the collaborative side of it right to the beginning so that the ideas when we're constructing things happen together and we really get a sense of it all coming together to work in a single piece. So one way you might be able to think about this is it's something of a really stretched out jam session. So if you play an instrument and you go to jam with some musicians, then you kind of experiment and explore different ideas. You pick up things of other people. You find things inside yourself that you didn't know were there. And the resulting piece of music you end up with, it, it's not a piece of music that's made by a single person there. It's kind of this collective existence that only exists due to the meeting of minds that happened at that point. So when we have these meetings where we come and talk to each other, it's really about listening to each other and experimenting with what each other's done and trying to get a sense of resonating with other people's sort of maker activities and what kind of ideas have gone into these different instruments, like how does movement affect sound and where is the origin of the sound? Is it coming out of a battery or is it coming out of physical action? So the word ensemble is, it's uh, it's quite a nice word because it, it describes a collection of musical instruments, but it also describes what happens when instruments successfully work together. When you talk about the ensemble of a piece, it's the way the different instruments have each managed to converge into a single unified sound. So when we're developing these instruments, I mean, developing each little interface, it's a very personal and unique thing. You put a lot of yourself into it, but it's also a case of compromise and of doing things that maybe wouldn't necessarily be what you do by yourself, but getting a sense of how we can create just a small part of some bigger ensemble. And musical ensembles like an orchestra, it's evolved over hundreds of years. So trying to do this in about 10 months and just condense down the practice. So here's kind of a sketch of how it might look in the final thing. Uh, it's got these eight musical instruments arranged in a circle. These people, these are audience members, uh, and you come along and you experiment and you use the different instruments and you listen to other people using things as well and create music together. So quickly, because uh, it's a lightning talk, I'll go through what kind of instruments these are. Uh, this one's called Campanology and it uses a Kinect and it's by Dom. And you create these sort of generative, quite tribal rhythms by waving your arms around. And he's developed it out of uh, the algorithms used for church bell ringers, which is like a long English tradition. And it's a very sort of mathematical process of ringing bells over about an eight hour period. This is called the Animal Kingdom by Daniel. And it's an instrument that you play by casting shadows onto a piece of paper. And there's a camera underneath which is interpreting these shadows. So on the surface of it, you can do animal sounds, like you can do a dog sound. And I think this one's a wolf sound. If you use it for a while, you start to find more and more things in there. The guy's a little bit of a, a maverick when it comes to developing things. I think he's got an entire synthesizer in there that you can find and twist around. This one's a little bit more mysterious. This is Tadeus, and it's called the Generative Net Sampler, but it's also using the Connect. But this time, you've got these hidden trigger zones around for you to try to find things. This is lighter face, and this is by Casper. Uh, that's not Casper on the screen. That's who's using it. 
but it's a grid of light sensors, and each sensor is tied to the, a different harmonic of this drone sort of 60 hertz sound. So as you sweep a light over it, you sort of sweep through these different textual spaces, but you get this really beautiful sound coming out of it. This is Susan's instrument. This is the mini theremin. Just a couple more. And uh, this is a homemade theremin, which is being used not to create theremin sounds, but as a controller, which is then routed through software, which uses recordings taken from a nuclear power station to create this sort of really powerful, static sounding uh, electricity. This is Panos, this is Sonic Spit. It's a round uh, handheld sphere with a gyroscope and an accelerometer, so it can tell what orientation it's in. And you can use it in your hand to sort of move through different types of timbral effects, or you can roll it along the floor, and things like that. Number nine, no, sorry, number seven is Wallace. This is called the Joker, and it's, uh, it's kind of a percussion instrument that you play with a hat and gloves. And he's sewn conductive thread through the gloves and put these metal pads on each finger and then grounded it on the hat. So you have a different drum for each finger and you play it by tapping, tapping your fingers against your head. And finally, this is my one. This is one that also uses the Kinect. And it's a flute that you play by moving your hands and it places this big cylinder of notes around you, uh, arranged in sort of a harmonic way so that as you move your hand through it, you sort of sweep through different melodies. Okay, that was eight instruments. Um, I'm going to show you a quick video that we made. This video was recorded mostly at Music Tech Fest, where uh, we kind of did like an audience test thing. Uh, this is in May. The Cave of Sounds is an interactive installation made up of eight new musical instruments in a circle. And it's a participatory work for audience members to come along and experiment with these different sounds. The installation is the result of a 10-month process where we've been meeting up regularly to create new musical instruments. We began by exploring the ideas of prehistoric music. What was the drive for people to come together to start creating sound together? We've got eight instruments. Three of them are based on the connects and they respond to the physical movement of the body. Two of them are based on light. One of them is a drone that responds through shining a light over different parts. Another one is a shadow instrument. One of them is based on the theremin. And one is a sphere with an accelerometer and a gyroscope inside. And we also have one which is a glove and a hat. And it's a percussive piece that you play by tapping your fingers against the hat. So we're really trying to encourage people to look up into this circle and be a part of this unified collection. And we're sending OSC messages to some central system, which allows the instruments to identify places to converge and identify when people are communicating with each other. But it will also inform this visual projection coming down in the center. After people have been there for a while, they gradually begin to converge on common ideas. They notice each other and interactions begin to happen. It's an opportunity to experiment with entirely brand new instruments that nobody knows how to play. But it's also a chance to come and connect with strangers and also with your friends on these instruments and find ways of using music as a way to communicate with each other. Okay, that's our little promo video. By the way, that video was made by uh, Susan Borja. Suze is over here, so if you need a video, go and talk to Suze. <laughs> um, let me get my slides back. Okay, so we kind of saw there's a little bit more going on in the installation. With the instruments are all digital, which means we can network them together and they can communicate to make things happen. Um, one of the things we found when we were showing this at Music Tech Fest, uh, well, it's, a, it's a very much a piece about creating music together. It's about what happens when individuals come together to create music, and what kind of connection does that create between you? And the installation, which is called the Cave of Sounds, that's kind of inspired, as said, by this idea of prehistoric people coming together and using music as a way of establishing a sense of common identity um, perhaps even before we had language to do that. What we found a little bit at Music Tech Fest was that, I mean, people really got into the instruments, but they got into them very much in their own little world. 
And sometimes we kind of ended up with a room full of individuals experimenting with one thing, which isn't quite what we're wanting to happen because it's a piece about playing music together. So we're kind of investigating ways of getting people to work together a bit more. So there's one other thing that happened is uh, people would come as groups and they would go around the instruments one by one and take it in turns each to use the instrument rather than splitting up and going around and using them all at the same time to play together. So we've got two things we're working on at the moment and we are coming to the conclusion that this is the networking between the instruments and a visual projection to try to inspire people a little bit to work together. So having the instruments networked means that we can synchronize the tempo and the, the beat on them and the harmony and the loudness of things. So you end up with a much more cohesive piece of music, even though they're very experimental instruments creating quite crazy sounds. And the other thing is this floor projection. And the plan here is that when you have people playing together and the instruments are networked so they can sense that they're playing together, we're going to project onto the floor the connections that are happening. So like really sort of emphasize the fact that when two people come together and create sound together in the same space, they're forming a connection between each other. And so hopefully you'll be using it. You always start in your own little world, but then you look up and you gradually see it. OK, that's the conclusion of the talk. So the debut of the work will be in August. And we're going to debut it with the Hack the Barbican Festival. If you've not uh, come across the Hack the Barbican stuff yet, then just Google Hack the Barbican. And it's uh, going to be a lot of fun over at the Barbican all across August. Um, if we don't actually have a finalized date for when we'll be showing this yet. But if you want to be kept up to date, then uh, you can look on, there's a mailing list on my website, or you can just talk to me afterwards. I'll get your email address. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs> Time for questions? Yeah. Okay, uh, if you want to ask any questions, I have to come over with the microphone and ask you for the, so that we can get it all on the camera. Just curious whether you've tried it with children at all. I mean, you mentioned the adults standing in groups, each waiting for the other one to try it and making sure they're doing it properly, I guess, and not wanting to look stupid with new technology. But children often aren't worried about that. They'll just get kind of stuck into things. Have you tried it with, with children at all? Yeah, we had, uh, we had a couple of kids at the Music Tech Fest. So that's our only public fest so far. And uh, there was this amazing family that came, and there were two boys there. And yeah, they were much less inhibited and much more free and running around and trying stuff out. Um, so we really want to take, yeah, take that and bring it to the adults as well. <laughs> somehow. Any more questions? Okay, cool. Well, that's the conclusion. Thanks very much. Thank you.